Although the DR Congo is in a fragile state of peace after seven years of civil war, an estimated 1,000 people are still dying every day due to disease, malnutrition, and the extreme violence that continues to plague the eastern provinces to this day. The current conflict in eastern Congo is inherited from the Rwandan genocide that took place in 1994. The extremist militias that massacred nearly one million lives were forced into the DRC and continue to operate there as a rogue militia known as the Interhamwe. Along with other uncontrolled rebel groups and government forces, these perpetrators are responsible for one of the most horrible crimes of the Congo conflict, the raping and systematic destruction of women and their families. Today we went to Ponzi Clinic, which is where the hospital is that treats women who are victims of rape and mutilation. They don't want just like anybody coming in there and talking to these women because they've been traumatized and it's a really serious thing. Rape in the Congo is much more than an act of forced sex. It is a violent and brutal form of warfare. Raped women are typically so savagely beaten and mutilated that surgery is their only hope for survival. Dr. Dennis McQuaggy has helped thousands of women recover from these terrible acts of violence as the head of the Ponzi Hospital in Bukavu. Et donc dans tous les villages, c'est l'insécurité et c'est la loi du plus fort qui uh, qui règne. Et donc c'est les plus faibles qui sont victimes. Comprenez les femmes et les enfants. Et les résultats, c'est les milliers de femmes qui viennent à l'hôpital pour se faire soigner. PMU is a Swedish uh, non-governmental organization, and PMU has been actually supporting Pamsi at the hospital since 1999 when it was built. We are working together with ECHO on this uh, project for assistance for victims of sexual violence. We have 3,600 women a year that comes into this project, about uh, 60 to 65 percent are raped. It's not by one person only. It's about 10 or 15 men who rape a one woman. And after having raped her, they have injured her by buying knives or two shotguns in her vagina. And they use an arm that is the arm that is the most easy to manage, the arm that is the most cheap to use. That's why they come to the clinic to get surgery, hoping that they will get healing there. Although Robin and Wendy came to the Congo with a desire to help women afflicted by rape, the horror of the victim's stories was beyond anything they could have imagined. In talking to one of the nurses there, she told us two stories of um, the most recent cases. Two sisters were digging, like out by the what they call the bush, which is like rural area that's like off from like a main road. Um, these men came by, and I think they were soldiers, weren't they? In Hamwe, they're like the soldiers who um, committed the Rwandan genocide. Um, and so they came off and like took these two sisters. And well, they raped them there, and they took them off into the bush and raped them some more. I started, when she was talking about sisters at the beginning, just picturing me and my sister. And like, and then just sort of, in my mind, like, started, was following the story, like, with, like, the two of us. And, um, they beheaded one of the sisters right there in front of the other one. and. They cut out her heart and her liver, and they cooked it with some bananas. And the soldiers were like really drunk, and they were like dancing around at like one point in the night. And she used that as like her escape, and she escaped. I kind of like had to stop, you know. I had to like just force that like image out of my head because it was like too much, you know. I couldn't like I couldn't take like thinking about it in in a personal sense. Like, I can't even imagine, like, atrocities that actually happen like that. Like, just these violent killings, like beheading somebody and, like, cutting them up. And it was just horrific. And just knowing that that's, like, something that's happening 
to to like another human being, you know, that that's someone's like life story, like that's that's what happened to them. It's it's really um, it's just it's just unbelievable, and I guess. Like in the face of such grief and such suffering, it's it's really it's really overwhelming. You know, it's really kind of um, humbling. Mais je crois que cette terre, c'est très complice. Si le monde s'est levé, le monde s'est levé, les Américains, les Français, les Anglais, les Congolais peuvent s'élever comme un seul homme et dire stopper de traiter les femmes comme euh, euh, traiter les, les femmes de cette façon-là, je crois que ça peut arriver. things that are going on here are inimaginable for us and I think it's very important that the world get to know what is happening here and that people can't no longer say we didn't know about it. Now you know, now we do something.